It's finally the first day at the aquarium. And to say I'm nervous is an understatement. Stay calm, you can do this. <sighs> You're Ariel, not Naira. I'm headstrong, spirited, and... Okay, let's get into character. Bright smile, check. Friendly manner, check. Ariel's accent, check. I was a dazzling mermaid and even let the little kids stick their stickers on my fishtail while I answered a bazillion questions about Atlantica and my Prince Eric. The last visitor was the sweetest little girl who handed me a collectible box of cutlery as a gift. Oh my, such a lovely comb, but it looks rare. Are you sure your guardians would agree to this? Of course, my brother always says yes to me. The little girl signaled someone in the crowd to come over and it was Arson? As in the cutest boy from school? Naira, oh my god. Your take on Ariel is spot on. I didn't know there was a side of you. I... What are you talking about? I know not of this Naira. Feeling the panic rise in me, I lifted my fishto costume and ran with my two feet as all the kids stared in shock. I would never wanted to disappoint those kids, but I had the biggest crush on Arson, and no way had I expected him to be there and see me like this. <sighs> At school, I was a loser, a nobody. Yet, when I was acting, I felt invincible. At least, I did until my timid, introverted side got in the way of my performing dreams. That day, our drama club mentor announced our school play this year would be Legally Blonde. I loved that movie so much, and I already knew all the lines. I couldn't let this opportunity pass me by, so when the mentor asked who wanted to audition as the lead, Elle Woods, I took all the courage and raised my hand. The whole room fell silent and suddenly burst into laughter. Oh please, how could a loser like you play the glamorous Elle Woods? Worst of all, the mentor agreed with her and said that I might be better suited for the nail lady role. And then she said the lead should go to someone who's outgoing and influential, like Eliza. What? Eliza's got the emotional range of a teaspoon. I gotta get this role. So I waited until the end of the meeting and then spoke to the mentor in private. I'm sorry, but I can't cast an Elle Woods with stage fright. Naira, I'll consider giving you the role, but only if you can prove to me that you can do this without your fear getting the better of you. So, try practicing by going out in public and interacting with strangers. Get yourself comfortable in front of a crowd. Can you do that? Feeling determined, I went to look for some kind of social experiment right away. And that's why I applied for this job at the aquarium. But I never thought anyone from class would show up. Least of all, Arson. He even caught up with me at school the next day, insisting he saw me at the aquarium. And typical me, being all fidgety and shy, I blurted out, maybe you mistook me for my twin sister, Cora. Oh, in that case then, can I get her number? Or can you like, arrange for me to go on a date with her? The way she glowed with confidence was amazing. Wow, I didn't expect him to be that into my acting. How ironic. Wait, what if I continue to play Cora and go on a date with him? I could practice my acting as this unapologetically outgoing girl while spending time with him? Tempting, right? Okay, wait at the book cafe near school on Sunday, 3 p.m. I'll tell Cora about it. I'd been preparing for this date the whole week. After watching multiple tutorials on YouTube, I was finally able to put together this bold look. All that's left to do was to wear Cora's self-confidence to match it. So I did a Bella Hadid runway strut into the cafe, straight past the gawping onlookers and over to Arson's seat and interrupted him from his reading. Hi, is that a Rick Riordan's book? Uh, yeah, Heroes of Olympus. Are you a fan of Riordan too? Are you kidding me? I've read all of his works. Yes, Breaking the Ice, success. We connected over our shared love of fantasy novels and other nerdy things. I didn't want the date to ever end, so I invited him along to a secret place of mine. I covered his eyes until we got there. Being the cute guy he was, he went along with it, even though he looked unsure about what was happening. When I turned the lights on and the ice rink appeared, his face lit up. Then the snow began to fall. It felt like a scene out of Frozen. Then we went onto the ice and... Arson fell straight onto his butt. <laughs> Stop laughing, this is my first time, okay? Aww, embarrassed Arson was so cute. <laughs> I helped him up and it was the first time our hands touched. I led him around the rink and taught him some moves. When I looked at him, I saw him looking back at me with this big grin on his face. Then suddenly he pulled me in and I fell right into his embrace. Our faces were so close and I swore we were about to kiss. Ugh, 
Overcome with nerves, I pushed him away, and he lost his balance and fell flat on the ice. But he jumped up to his feet right away and skated after me. Oh, don't let me catch you, or else... Let's see you try. <laughs> Yesterday felt like a dream. We texted each other non-stop up until the last class of the day, P.E. My eyes were still glued to my phone when a flying ball hit my knee. It was from Eliza. Right after that, another one came and knocked my glasses off. I shielded myself with my arms and hoped it would go away soon, and surprisingly, it did. Only, Arson was standing in front of me, blocking all the balls. Arson, what are you doing there? We were just playing around. <laughs> playing around? Can't you see you're hurting her? Then Arson turned to me and asked me if I was okay. Could this be it? Did he realize I was the girl he went on a date with? Uh, thank you for helping me out. You're my friend, and also Cora's sister, so I've got to look out for you, right? Oh, he didn't recognize me. That meant my acting was flawless, right? Then why did I feel so uneasy about it? As uncomfortable as I felt about the situation, I also liked Arson way too much to stop it. So I continued pretending to be Cora. He acted so lovey-dovey on our dates, and it made my heart melt. But at school, he only saw me as Cora's helpless, clumsy sister. He talked about her constantly and stared blankly into space as if there were an imaginary Cora there. It started bugging me that Arson only liked the confident, fun, and spontaneous heroine I'd created, not coy Naira. <sighs> I couldn't blame him though, if I didn't find myself lovable. Maybe that's why mom left me and didn't bother to write or to call. I couldn't do this anymore. I couldn't feed Arson with false expectations of an unreal character. So I typed out a text to Arson telling him that Cora was on her way to study abroad for three years and that this relationship wouldn't work. Arson kept texting back, non-stop, and even came to my house to look for Cora and broke down in tears when I told him she'd already left. I felt so bad, but that was the only way for him to stop fantasizing about Cora. Over time, his pain would fade, right? From that day on, Arson always looked for me at school and consistently asked about her. This didn't go unnoticed by Eliza, who was clearly green with envy. Lunchtime came, and Eliza, along with her minions, suddenly approached me. Why so lonely? Has Arson abandoned you? <laughs> I tried to ignore her and eat my lunch, but she wouldn't leave me alone. Fine then, I'll lend you a hand. Arson, hi! Did you know that Naira here is so obsessed with you? She even admits that she loves to follow you everywhere like a stalker. How creepy. Huh? What was this girl saying? Now people were staring at me, judging me for something that wasn't even true. I was done with being Naira, the loser. If only... Yeah, if only Cora's personality helped me stand up for myself. Shut up! Me and Arson are friends, so what? Why do you have to make stuff up about me? Is it because you're jealous of me? What? Me? Jealous of you? You like Arson, don't you? I feel sorry for you, really. You're gonna pick on everyone he talks to? How pathetic. Just like that, people made disapproving comments at Eliza. She couldn't do anything other than run away in shame. While I suddenly received praise for standing up against the school's tyrant, people seemed to love this new side of me. So perhaps it was a good time to give myself a makeover. The next day at school, I started dressing up boldly and wearing contact lenses instead of nerdy glasses. My classmates seemed to like my new look. My drama club mentor changed her attitude towards me as well. I even applied for the student council and my popularity grew, and so did my friendship circle. The world opened up to me, but weirdly, being around people all the time just felt uncomfortable and exhausting. I couldn't really talk to any of them, as we weren't even close. I just felt so left out. When it came to a charity date auction, being on the council committee meant that I was appointed a bachelorette. That meant everyone joining this event would bid to take me on a date, and that bidding money would go to the school's fund to build a new cafeteria. That's how I ended up here, on stage at the auction. I tried my best to act cool to raise as much money as possible. The boys kept cheering for me, trying to show their charms, and I tried to flirt back by talking nonsense and winking at them. Once the bidding started, chaos commenced as people kept raising their paddle numbers. 40, 60, 80, it suddenly came to me that I didn't want to go on dates with any of these guys. I didn't know them at all. And just then, Arson shouted from the back. 500. 500 going once, going twice, and sold. 
Arson jumped on stage, grabbed my hand, and dragged me out of there. He led me to the garden, and then he started asking me tons of questions. What is it with you lately? It's as if you're someone else. N no way! I'm just the same old Naira! Tell me the truth. Are you... Cora? You switch places with your sister to protect her, right? Oh, Cora, I've missed you so much! After all this time, he was still in love with Cora? Even now when I changed myself, he still didn't see me as Naira? Arson, I... I can't. And then I just ran out of there. After a night of crying myself to sleep, I was back at school and found myself summoned to the principal's office with a smirking Eliza. There she showed the principal a video recording of my conversation with Arson last night, which was proof that someone else had been replacing me at school. If this was true, I could be expelled. Oh no, no, no! Panic! I blurted out a lie that I had bipolar and that sometimes I switched to the other persona and acted up. The principal seemed confused, but then she insisted I go to the school therapist. <sighs> I had no choice but to agree. And it was actually really good for me. Through talking to the therapist, I could finally open up about my past. Ever since I was a kid, I've always been super shy. I thought it was why my mom left me behind when she split from dad and moved out. She hadn't even contacted me once. I know a childish nerd like me would never be the one who she could really talk to. Thank God my dad came to pick me up after that. The thought of facing my so-called friends on the bus was making me nauseous. Were you that unhappy not having your mother around? I just don't know why she left me behind without a word. Was I a loser in her eyes? Honey, listen. Mom loves you. And the reason you didn't receive any letters from her was because I hid them all from you. What? Why would you do that? Because I was so broken after your mom left that I thought it would be better if you and I could forget everything about her. I... I'm sorry. Don't you know how terrible I felt about myself all those years just because of your selfishness? I ran into the house immediately. I couldn't look at him right now, only to see Mom and Cora were sitting in the living room. Both rushed towards me and pulled me in for a hug. Yeah, the Cora character wasn't entirely made up. Instead, I based her on my real life twin sister. The little five-year-old me always struck by Cora's side hid behind her dress while she boldly stood up against anyone who dared to pick on me. I'd always looked up to her. Turned out, when Dad got the call from school, he realized his actions had caused me pain, so he did everything in his power to contact Mom and brought her and Cora from LA to here. Mom kept apologizing to me, saying she regretted every minute of leaving me behind. Seeing them all break down in tears like that ached my heart, but it gave me this warm feeling at the same time. After all this time, my family feud was finally resolved. Just at that moment, the doorbell rang. It's Arson! Naira, is that your boyfriend? What? I dragged him away immediately, and this time I admitted the whole truth to him. I told him how I lied that the girl in the aquarium was Cora, because I didn't think he'd like the real me, as I wasn't a confident presence. But my feelings for him were real, and that's why I tried so hard to get close to him. But I figured now that he knew the truth, it'd be over, so I'd just walk away. Finally, I'm back. I've been in LA for an entire winter break to spend more time with Mom and Cora and to figure myself out. I've realized that being an introvert is nothing to be self-conscious about. I'm observant, and that'll help a lot of my acting passion, right? This semester, I'll definitely try to impress my drama club mentor. No boys will ever distract me again. And that's when I spotted Arson waving at me with a huge bouquet in his hand. Arson, what are you doing here? I thought you were still mad at me. Well, I thought about it a lot, and honestly, things between us got messy, so I'd like to get to know you again. Only this time, please can it be the real you, as I really want to know what Naira's about. What do you say? Um, yeah, I'd love that. 